Welcome back to part two of the Fidelity 2000 1981 UK CB radio using the Cybernet 134 chassis. At this point we're going to move on and do the receiver but I forgot to do one thing when I was showing you the transmitter and that is we never set the frequency of the 10.24 reference oscillator crystal. So I'm going to put the radio now into transmit once again. We're on channel 20, it should be 27.79125 and it's dropped low with age which is absolutely normal and it's uh, the tuning capacitor is just there just by the crystal, I'll just see if we can adjust that alright It's going, it's going. I've just gone overshot it and we'll just back it off a bit. I'll try and set these just slightly high and I have done. It's twenty seven decimal seven nine one two six. So it's that slightly tiny bit over, so it's got a bit of leeway to drop back down again. Often when these type of radios come in for service, they've just dropped off frequency with age. And the other thing that goes out is the um the receive um, detector and we'll do that in a moment. So go back to receive, I've got the signal generator on, you can hear that. In the meantime, in between these two uh, sections of the video, I did get the um, switch to cleaner spray out and I've done the volume control, it was a bit noisy uh, when we showed you it just coming on initially. Um, I use the Servisol product it doesn't attack the plastics and I've been using it now for 20-30 years and uh, and it does seem to work well because you get a bit of dirt in especially in a mobile situation and especially with lorries and, and, and tractors and things like that you get a bit of dust in the volume controls and it can be noisy when you're just um, uh, turning the volume and things so we'll now start with um, the receiver and we've already done the VCO for the receiver if you remember I showed you that and that was in lock properly. So I've got the test meter back out because most of these um, adjustments, in fact, we'll leave that. Uh, we'll leave that kind of in view. Most of these adjustments are done on a digital meter. That's quite a cheap one. So we're not, it's not accuracy we're looking for. It's a maximum reading. And the test point is the capacitor. It's the left hand leg of the capacitor 84, which is just there. I'll just zoom in on that for you. So we've got the AN240 IF uh, subsystem chip at capacitor there, and it's the left hand leg, is in fact the test point, which is according to my service manual anyway. Although these are popular sets, I don't actually see enough of them to remember the procedures. I have to get the manual out every time. So, we'll go on that left leg. There we go. I've got a reading now, just put that in view. And what we're now going to go for is transformer 5. Let's bring that down a bit. If we're just looking for a maximum reading, transformer 5 is right where I've put the meter, isn't that just typical? It's that one down there. off, turn the volume up a bit, I'm looking at my test set as well. So we've done transformer 5, transformer 6 is next.
and having done that we move on to Transformer 7 just that one there test prods come off It looks pretty spot on this. I, I would think the reason the customer sent this in is because it's dropped off frequency. The deviation was slightly high. And then the volume control was crackling. Moving down to transformer number 9. Now I've dispensed with the meter and was totally on the test equipment. A cyanide meter, which I can't really show you. You may hear a difference in the sound. So I'm looking at the oscilloscope screen in the cyanide meter. And then down to number 11. And here's the one which often is out, and that is transformer number 12 which is the detector so I've put a really hefty signal to signal generator I'll just switch the oscilloscope in so you can see that I'll try and move my head out of the way as well and the detector is that one down there just by the AN240 IF subsystem chip and we're looking for absolute maximum on that peak There we go, that's set up as well. So drop the signal off, do a sensitivity check, and drop the uh, that off. Do you know that's one of the best of these I've seen? It, that is absolutely splendid. Um, that's 0 0.3 of a microvolt, 0. 0.3 one of a microvolt, yeah, that's absolutely fantastic. Right, we'll set up S9, it's 100 microvolts uh, signal into the signal generator, and the meter is in fact showing what? The meter's showing 5, so that would count as a lazy needle. So the receive meter is, I'll use the yellow tool to point it out, we've just done the detector, which is there, and it's the preset next to it, which is RV3. So I'm just going to adjust that so that S9 is on the meter with that size of signal, which I've now done. And now we'll go for the squelch. As I've said many times before, you don't want the squelch so that it doesn't matter what signal you put in, it never opens. So I'm going to put the squelch on full. I'm going to turn the signal generator up, and that came in at 10 microvolts. I'll just turn the squelch right down, turn the signal generator up, set the squelch to the threshold and put the signal generator back on. And that's absolutely brilliant, it comes in exactly where you would expect it to. If it had needed adjusting, it's RV5 and it's just there. I'll just zoom in on that for you. And that's uh, covered it. I'll just recap on these. The receive adjustments are transformer 5 in, in this sequence. Transformer 5, transformer 7, transformer 8, transformer 9, transformer 10, transformer 11, and transformer 12, which is the detector, which you do with the big signal. And that's it, the set's now spot on.